Hey, what's up guys? Uh, so I've seen a lot of people online trying to figure out how to do this. Um, obviously, if you're watching this, you know what I'm doing. Uh, the title's pretty self-explanatory, but basically I have a 2015 Ford Interceptor sedan. Uh, also, sometimes people call them a Ford Taurus, even though they're technically not a Ford Taurus. But anyways, um, for some reason, a lot of people don't seem to know how to do the auxiliary modification where you have a uh, aux cord like this one and running it into the uh, radio here, radio like this. I think this is the non-sync radio, I think is what they call it. It's like one step above the base, but not quite uh, not quite a sync radio, I think is what it's supposed to kind of be considered as. I might be wrong there, but still. Um, so basically I'm just gonna go through and show you guys how I did it, uh, and I'll show you that it does work. So if I hit the uh, aux button here, let me see if I can get a better angle on what I'm doing here. So if I hit the aux button here, you'll see that it does in fact come on. And then if I play music from my phone, you guys can hear that. So not a, you know, that way you know. But uh, basically I've got a adapter going from my phone to this aux cord and this aux cord is running all the way into the dashboard and down behind the radio system here. All right, so hopefully you guys are at this point where you've gotten everything out of the way that you're gonna need. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my key off here. So hopefully you've gotten to this point and it's really, really simple, or at least for me it was. Um, I put my hand up under here once I have those screws out and just kind of wiggle this out and directly forward. Watch this top left corner here where the vent is. You'll want to kind of finagle this in a way that allows you to get that passed, just like so. And then once it's passed, the whole thing just kind of wants to fall away. Um, so you'll want to turn it around and you'll want to disconnect that line right there, that cable. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set my phone down because I don't have a tripod and uh, I'm going to disconnect that cable. Actually, I lied. I'm not going to disconnect that cable. I'm just going to turn mine over like that so you guys can see it. Um, and then the next thing to do is take out the um, screen piece here. And you'll see there's a cable on the back side of it. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. The little tab right here, you want to push down. I don't know if you can see my fingernail pushing that down or not. And then this bar across here, you'll want to pull back this way. So we're going to push down. And we're going to pull back, and you'll see it pops right out. Alright, now the last thing you're going to want to do. Now those are held in with screws, by the way, so... <laughs> I have that backwards. All right, so you'll see there is a screw on the bottom corner there, bottom corner there, top corner up here, and up here as well. I know this isn't a great quality video, guys, but this kind of just is meant to give you the gist of what I've done. Um, and then I'll put links and references in the uh, description for you guys. Uh, like I said, I'll put the link to the cable that I'm using, um, as well as a couple other options too. Once you get that screen out, though, um, it's really simple. The reason you have to take that screen out, or the reason I had to take that screen out, you may not have to, is because there's actually two screws, one right there and one right there, that hold in the main CD radio unit here. Um, I don't have tools to get to those without that screen being out. So I had to take that screen out. You may have specialty tools of some kind that make it to where you don't have to do that. But you also want to take out the uh, screw down here, here, and like I said, the ones, if I can, right there and right there. Um, and once you have those four screws out, you can pull the radio head unit out or the CD unit, whatever you want to call this. And you'll see there is a screen or there's a connector on the back side here. And you'll see my auxiliary cable is right here on the radio. Alright, so here's my aux cable. 
and it goes straight into the back of the main radio connector here. All right, so that's how I did it. It's really simple. It's almost plug and play. Um, the only thing is, uh, once you have that in, or once you have that cable in, uh, then you do have to go in with a program called Forescan. I know I've seen a lot of people online talking about having to go to the dealership and have the dealership program, uh, you know, program your computer with Ford IDS and, and, you know, all that stuff. That's not entirely true. You can do it that way, but it's not required to do it that way. You can do it as simply as getting a, I think my, uh, I think my, what is this, an OBD Link EX, I think, so let's see. This is what I have, it's an OBD Link EX. I think you need two port down here. And then you plug it into your laptop and you go to, I think it's forscan.org. You can just search forscan. I'll put a link to it in the description. You download it and then um, here in a minute, I'll show you the video process for that, um, or I may link it to another video depending. There may be a part two to, the, to all of this, but basically all I did is I got the cable and I pinned it into this connector. I'll put a wiring diagram on the uh, in the description below, but basically the wiring diagram, when you look at it, you're looking at it from this direction, okay? So you're counting pin one over here where my thumb is, and uh, pin two is the top row, uh, pin three is top row, four, five, six. So we are in for scan. Um, you know, this again, this is just a brief tutorial. I don't even want to say tutorial. This is basically just some information uh, for you guys so you know kind of what to do or what I've done to do this auxiliary uh, modification. Um, I know a lot of you guys, like I said earlier, have been asking um, online how to do this and, you know, where to get the uh, information from and this, that, and the other. And not a lot of people have been uh, eager or willing to help. So uh, I figured I would make this short little video. If you guys want a detailed, like, step-by-step -step on how to do all of this, let me know in the comments section, and I'll make a detailed step-by-step -step on how to do everything. Um, I'm actually getting a new one of these vehicles in that has nothing done to it, and I can, you know, I can go through and uh, make a whole a whole series on the various modifications from, you know, enabling the trunk, uh, enabling the trunk button when the key's not in the ignition to, uh, you know, adding key fobs and remote start and all the all those other various things I I keep seeing online. Um, but just let me know what you guys want, and uh, you know, we'll kind of go from there. Um, so. When you're in for scan on these interceptor sedans, again, this is for the interceptor sedan. I don't know if it's the same way for the interceptor utility. Um, and this is the sedan 13 to 19 uh, model years. I don't know if it works. Like again, I don't know if it works the same way. Um, you know, with the utilities as it does with the sedans, but I would assume they're similar. So with the sedans, this is what I've done it is we went over the physical modifications earlier of how we pulled the radio out um, or the CD head unit, whatever you want to call it, and added the wiring to the back end of it. Well, in order to get your auxiliary button on the radio to actually work, you have to use Forescan and you have to change a value. So once you're connected to the vehicle and in Forescan like I am, um, you know, you'll want to open up the FCD, FCDIM module configuration but you want to make sure that you are under the as built format okay again the as built format not the standard format but the as built format and you're going to want to click play on this bottom corner here it's going to give you a warning you're going to go ahead and hit okay on that and basically what you're going to do is you're going to change this first line here um, or whichever line it is that you have that 7a5-01-01 Okay, you're going to change it to 0001, then you're going to do 1000 for the second block, and then the third and final block is 20, D as in David, F as in Foxtrot. And again, I will put a video link in the description for where I found this information. It was actually a gentleman on YouTube. I cannot remember his name, um, but I will put a link in the description for uh, for his video as well. So shout out to the, to him on uh, you know providing that information on how to enable the auxiliary function. 
Um, so I'll put, like I said, I'll put a link to his video in the description, but that's what I did is I changed it from its original value, default value to 0001, then 1000, then 20 DF, and my auxiliary function works now. Um, now I will go ahead and say before you do all of this to save everything, um, I do save all to anything I ever modify as an as built. Uh, and the reason I do that is in case I screw something up, because it's really easy to screw something up in these because um, you're modifying hex code. And if you screw something up and you don't have a way of downloading the factory file or whatever you need to, um, you know, you're kind of screwed at that point. So I always make sure that I save everything or save all beforehand and then kind of go from there. So. Uh, once you have modified that line, you'll want to hit write all because there is no write option directly next to that value. So you'll want to hit write all um, and then you want to cycle your ignition and then you should be good to go. If you've done the wiring correct, you run everything and you've done this uh, as built modification, then you should be good to go. Um, it shouldn't be a problem for you guys to, you know, to now have auxiliary function or auxiliary input again. Let me know if you guys want me to do a full, in-depth, detailed tutorial on how to do this entire process from taking every bolt out on the dashboard and every panel um, and exactly what I did to, uh, to get the wiring in there, uh, you know, all the way to installing Forescan, getting it set up, you know, connected to the vehicle, all that. Um, you know, I can go through a full, full tutorial on that if you guys need me to, but, uh, you know, just kind of let me know and let me know if you guys want any, anything else, you know, uh, I've got a bunch of these cars laying around and, uh, you know, I've got plenty of stuff to do with them. So be happy to show you guys what I, what I do know. And, uh, maybe you guys can teach me some stuff that I don't know. So thanks again. And, uh, see you guys next time.